Can we use a thermal camera to identify faulty components on a PC motherboard? The idea is simple, failing components, well they might be running very hot and could be very easy to identify using a thermal camera. Let's start looking at a retro motherboard from Gigabyte, the GAK8VM800M. We can see here it's got a chipset from VIA. It works very well under Windows 98 and has compatibility with PCI DOS sound cards. It has featured in many of my videos. I've got some really cool footage here showing the temperatures of a lot of the components. Now this motherboard has been rock solid. I don't expect to find anything with this one. We can see some of the components they're in the 50s, uh, mid 50s, maybe into the 60s, but really nothing too concerning. And here we have some other parts that are running a little bit warmer. These are MOSFETs around the CPU socket, but very important. The capacitors, they're all looking good. Uh, Gigabyte did a good job using capacitors from uh, Nishikon. Those are from the HM series. They're built to last and even after 20 years, I can't see anything that's out of the ordinary. The idea with the capacitors is over time, if they start to fail, the ESR can rise and that means the temperature will go up. So they are quite easy to identify. But everything here is looking pretty solid. The thermal camera we are testing today is from Thermal Master. It is the P3. It is a review sample I got sent to for free and it's another awesome gadget in the toolbox to yeah diagnose and identify issues with old computer parts. In a recent video we looked at some tweezers to test capacitors but they don't really work in circuit. It's hit and miss because you're measuring other components as well. So you really have to desolder them and then you can measure them. So it's really after the fact. Basically, well, if I desolder capacitors, I will definitely go through the process of replacing them anyway. So yeah, this motherboard, I can't spot anything that's off. Let's move on to the next one. Here is the next motherboard, another one from Gigabyte. This one is for the good old Pentium 4. So expect temperatures to be a little bit higher across the board. It is the GA8PE800. And again, Gigabyte went with good Japanese capacitors. We have some Senyo capacitors around the socket and also some caps from Rubicon. To generate a bit of heat, I maxed out the RAM slots. So this one has three slots. So I'm using three RAM modules. This one doesn't have onboard graphics like the previous motherboard. So I'm using a basic Radeon video card and then just looping 3D Mark. The camera has manual focus. There's a ring where you can adjust the focus and it can focus from objects as near as eight millimeters up to 80 meters. So a nice range. Every now and then you can hear a little clicking in the background. That is the camera calibrating itself. It's compatible for Android, Apple, and also for the Windows PC. I'm using an Android phone. There are quite a few settings and we will take a closer look at that later in this video. You can change the color scheme and yeah, it looks very cool. That is absolutely the case. But of course, it also makes reading the temperatures a little bit easier. In this mode, we can see the temperature in the center with the crosshair and it also automatically finds the hottest part and the coldest one. So this is quite a useful mode and it has several modes that you can configure. Like I said, Pentium 4 runs a little bit hotter. The VRMs, uh, the MOSFETs here running almost into the 70s, the inductors into the 60s, but again, the capacitors, they're running nice and cool. Well, that's what you get with Japanese capacitors. Here we are taking a closer look at the capacitors. These ones are from Senyo. These are on the VRM low side, sitting at the V-Core. Well, they are sitting in the 50s, so maybe they deserve uh, a closer look or getting replaced. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. 
Because they're sitting close to the CPU heatsink, it's a little bit hard to judge because there is warm air coming out of the heatsink. Here I'm checking components near the RAM slot. The caps are in the 40s, I would say, looking good. And like I said, I didn't have any issues. It was looping 3D Mark without any dramas. The chipset cooler also running very cool. And here we have a black and white theme going on. You can configure it to have dark colors show hot temperatures or bright colors to show hot temperatures. So all sorts of settings you can tweak. So yeah, with this motherboard, I wasn't able to find anything wrong. The video card, some of the components uh, sitting in the 60s, but again, this is nothing out of the ordinary. This is a passively cooled video card, so it is expected to run a little bit hot. You can see here that the RAM modules are running a little bit warmer, the area behind the GPU, of course. And here we've got, I guess that's a, a MOSFET to do with the voltage regulation sitting in the 80s. So this one is a little bit warmer. But all in all, I think this motherboard is fine. I don't see a reason to do a recap on this one, but yeah, I want to hear from you. What are your thoughts? And here we have another motherboard. This is one I only just recently got in. And we can see it's detecting a hot spot at the back right corner. 93, 94, it's actually going up a little bit. It started off a little bit cooler. So this is definitely an area that we want to check out. It's near the memory, the RAM slots. This is a NVIDIA based chipset motherboard for socket 939 a OEM motherboard for Lenovo and in very good condition. So yeah, I want to make sure that this one is solid. Here I'm playing around with the frame rate. The device has some upscaling technology, but by enabling that the frame rate goes down a little bit. So I prefer turning it off to have a smoother experience. The frame rate, by the way, is 25 FPS. The resolution of the thermal imaging sensor is 256 by 192 and then you can upscale it to 512 by 384. It supports temperature ranges from negative 20 all the way up to 600 degrees Celsius. Here we are checking the components near the CPU socket. This capacitor sitting in the 50s, that's all looking fine. Again, they chose really nice caps from Panasonic, FJ and FR series. These are low ESR and ultra low ESR. And yeah, the temperature's looking perfectly fine. Again, the MOSFETs are the components that are emitting the most heat. And the inductors also, they're also getting quite hot. But around the CPU area, this is too expected. And now let's have a closer look at that area near the RAM socket. So I'm getting close. It's just behind the ATX connector. And we can see here the maximum temperature is 110 degrees. It's that little component here. We will later take a look under the microscope to see what it is. But it's not just that component. It's also the capacitors. Some of them sitting in the 70s uh, by the looks of it. I'll try to find a different angle and I'm doing the finger test and they are too hot to touch. So there's definitely something going on in this area. So let's go a little bit closer. I'm adjusting the camera and look at that, the capacitors. These ones are sitting almost in the yeah mid 70s, almost 80 degrees, so definitely too hot. And when you try touching them, you really get burned. And that component here, 110 degrees. The caps in the back, still in the 60s, also too hot to touch. So this area needs some more investigation. Let's take a look at the area under the microscope. This is the component here that's causing the issue, running at over 100 degrees, and it's a voltage regulator, an adjustable one. And we can see there are two resistors nearby these control the voltage. It's outputting 3.3 volts. The capacitors nearby, I can see there are four 220 microfarad caps. So they will definitely get replaced. And there's also another one with 
a capacity of 1000 microfarads. I was chatting a lot with ChatGPT to help me understand what's going on here and it believes that the capacitors might be failing and the ESR going up which generates more heat but also that this could make the VRM circuit oscillate which makes the voltage um, regulator module work a little bit harder but also this device doesn't have a heatsink it uses the uh, surrounding PCB area as a heatsink and then maybe it's just heating up the other components so it's hard to know what exactly is going on. Uh, I will definitely replace these capacitors. I'm also getting a second board of the same type in to compare to see what's going on with that one. Maybe it's an issue just by design. Well, we will find out in a later video. So yeah, guys, I'm excited. We managed to see something that deserves further investigating. I got really good answers on the capacitor video from the other day and a lot of you just say 20 year old caps they should all get replaced but a lot of you are saying well if it works you know no need to change anything and i like those answers that told me you should learn more about what that capacity is actually doing understanding what its purpose is and then replacing caps uh, on a need by need base also that means it's cheaper you don't have to do a full recap Buying Panasonic caps is expensive and also you need all the gear and it takes a lot of time. In the box is the thermal camera and it is really compact. You just plug it into the USB-C port at the bottom of the phone. It comes with a user manual with a little case. There's a 50 centimeter extension cable and also a type C to lightning adapter for those of you wanting to use it on an Apple device. I've got some footage here of me interacting with the app. So you go to the Google Play Store and download the app. It supports uh, three different temperature ranges. One is automatic and then you have one for 20 to 150 and the other one 100 to 600 degrees. Here we can see all the different options to identify temperatures. There is the automatic mode, which I really like. There's a crosshair in the center and then the low and the high temperature. This one is very useful, but you can also draw a line, a rectangle and a circle, and it will show you the average, the min and the max in that specific area. It supports up to three lines or up to three shapes. So you can drag three circles or three rectangles. And yeah, all in all, very useful for the PCB inspection that I'm doing, I think the automatic mode is the most useful. I wanna have something in the center where I can pinpoint the temperature that I'm looking at right now. And here we can see all the different color modes. There is white hot, black hot, iron red. Another one is red hot. So it looks really cool and mesmerizing just looking at the screen. Rainbow, jungle, aurora, we have a city theme low light, gold, and what else have we got? Lava, and then the last one is medical. So absolutely mesmerizing to watch. And it can also take screenshots and capture video files, including audio recording, which is awesome. Not so much for getting high quality audio recording on your phone, but to later synchronize it in the video editor. So for those of you who want to uh, comment while filming, this is very handy. There are settings for contrast and brightness. You can also rotate the screen in steps of 90 degrees and you can mirror the uh, perspective. There's also a button for scale. It supports digital zoom. So lots of options to tweak the image. You can also turn on a nifty picture in picture feature turning on the camera on your phone and then doing an overlay. It's got a setting for the opacity so you can customize it to your liking. So that's very nifty. If you wanna show what the real situation looks like uh, as an overlay on top of the thermal image footage. In terms of pricing, this gadget is a little bit more 
expensive. Now the prices, they change. We have a discount coupon as well. The base price is $3.99, but it's discounted to $2.99. And then we have a 10% coupon. There's also some Black Friday stuff going on. So have a look in the video description, but you should be able to pick one up for under $300. I will put links down below in the video description to their Thermal Master uh, online store, but also to their official Amazon store. So guys, this is a really nifty gadget to have in your toolbox, especially if you are into repairing motherboards or diagnosing issues and you wanna make sure that your old parts are in good condition. The price is a little bit higher, so this is not one of those gadgets for only 50 or $100 like some of the recent videos. This one is more expensive, more sophisticated, but if you are considering doing some repairing, maybe you are interested in learning how to replace capacitors, which is a similar journey that I'm going through, then this seems to be like a very useful gadget. In terms of using it, I really didn't have any issues. It is plug and play. You can configure the app that as soon as you insert the camera, it launches the app and you're good to go. So really easy to use. There's not anything complicated that you need to learn. It's all very straightforward. So guys, there you have it. That was my take on the Thermal Master P3 PCB Thermal Camera which will help me diagnose faults from old retro computer parts, especially capacitors. I've recently invested in a few other gizmos and gadgets to make the job easier. So expect some cap uh, replacing videos in the near future. And yeah, I hope you like it. Leave comments down below. I always enjoy reading from you. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you soon with another one.